So it's uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to Ali Gersoy, who we've met briefly already. But uh, Ali's the uh, current CEO at Fashion One. He runs two television channels uh, and a production studio in Asia. He's one of the most persuasive people I've ever met, certainly. Um, he managed once to get uh, permission to shut down Fifth Avenue during peak hours on a weekday for a PR stunt. And he managed to convince people in China to set up a, a video streaming service like YouTube, where, I don't know if you know, the, uh, the internet in China is very, very restricted. So he could, as they say, sell ice to the Eskimos. So without any further ado, here we have Ali Gersoy. Thank you, David. Now, I'm going to ask you to be patient with me because I'm trying still to work out. Oh, where is the yellow arrow for my? Oh, here we go. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you, David and Leonardo, uh, Eddie, who's not here, for um, this small introduction. Um, so we're going to talk about persuasion tonight. And, and, you know, 496 days ago, on the 6th of January 2017, um, I was having a drink with a gentleman in sitting in a bar in Hong Kong, and the conversation about um, his um, TV channels. He's obviously the owner of Fashion One, and he was telling me about his vision uh, for his media group um, and how he would like me to join his corporation to help him turn his vision into reality. Six months later, I joined the group. Uh, it was on a Saturday on July 1st, 2017. Um, and, you know, I, I was trying to do what everything that David described, described. And, you know, that sounds great on paper. But about 30 days later, I realized that it was actually not that rosy. Um, you know, it was, I, I, I thought to myself, this is not going to be a smooth ride at all. Because the reality was significantly different than what I was presented with during the, what I'm going to call the sales pitch. The platforms, or in other words, the cable network we were distributing it wanted to, most of them wanted to cancel the contract with us. Our viewing figures were going down and, and, and I'm not going to go any further. There were quite a lot of things that were not as good as they were when this gentleman did a great job of persuading me to a great sales pitch to join his company. Um, so, you know, in other words, what he did was a great, he was very good at communication. And, well, you know, 10 months down, <laughs> I'm still here, and I'll take you through some of my experiences and, and, and how I'm using persuasion on a day-to-day -day basis to address some of the issues I face with my team. And, and you know, for me, one of the biggest um, skill that one needs to have in, in communication is persuasive communication. Persuasion is very abstract as, as a skill because everyone has a different opinion about something or about persuasion itself. Um, persuasion needs to be adapted to circumstances of a person or a situation, and that starts with how we read or interpret a particular event at a given point in time. Here's an example that I'm sure most of you have seen before, the checker shadow illusion. Now, the checker shadow illusion, as you see in this video, the two um, the two gray um, cubic cubes are the same color. Yet to our minds, by a clever play of, of shadows, they look completely different. And if yeah, that video will play again in a second, is it playing again? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, okay. I, can. I can't see it playing, but if you guys see it, that's great. Um, so when you look at it, you, you realize as it's building that the two shadows that are the same, uh, two squares that are the same color look actually different and they're not. So that's where the persu persuasion start is about how our mind pictures what I called instant reality. Instant reality is what you see at a particular moment. And, 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 you know, there is probably as many instant realities that there are 
individuals in this session. What our mind is actually doing, it's not lying to us, it's just giving us, giving us the most realistic view of what may be happening on the outside. It's giving us a perceived image of those squares. The reason I like this and the reason I'm sharing this because I like it's a simple way to describe real persuasion. Real persuasion is not the art of words, it's not, uh, or at least not by, as per the diction. But it's, 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 it's a technique where you carefully choose the right words and combine them with the right image to help the vision that would allow you to reach the rational um, side of the person that you're talking to or what you, oops, sorry, I went too fast there. Or what you're trying to achieve um, in the in 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 the persuasion technique. So, in in this break, I I know it's been only a few minutes we started, but I'd like to do a first exercise where we take five minutes to think about a situation where you misread what your mind was showing you, which led you or your group not being able to persuade the other party to agree with you. Was there a sign you ignored? Did you jump to conclusion too quickly? Could you have used another approach to have the outcome you wanted? And think about it not only from uh, what your eyes see, but what you didn't see or notice in that particular situation that obviously transpired either through the conversation or later when you were analyzing what happened. Okay, so so if we can all go to the large workshop whiteboard, you see that his questions are, are going to be there, so you, in case you missed some of it. So yeah, we're almost all here, now we're all here. Good. So first names, A to H on the left, I to P in the middle, Q to Z on the right. So you click where you see first name and then you should be dragged there. Okay, so DW, in, in, anything interesting or not interesting, anything you want to share from your, your discussion there or someone from your group to share it? Uh, David, you had some, some interesting thoughts, so why don't, why don't you share something from what you were saying? Um, yeah, I, I feel a bit chastised now. It says, uh, what is it, write first and then talk second? <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't mean to and, no, 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 no. It's fine. It's 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 also when it, when you know when you get those emails and it says, "Please think about uh, whether you need to print out this email before doing it." I'm a person who says, uh, "Print before you th uh, print before you think." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I um, but any any uh, discussion that in, involves anybody else is obviously an exchange or a non-exchange of ideas. And you can do this with malicious intent, or you can do it as Eddie and Ali were saying, um, you do it with the best of intentions in order to try and bring people round to your point of view in the quickest time as possible. But that is also, I think, an art of, uh, of manipulation. I think it depends on, on whether your, your intentions are good or not. Um, but you'll never know that. You'll, you'll never know the person that you're actually speaking to, especially if you've only met them for the first time, what their intentions are. Okay, thank you. Hey guys, Pam, uh, Will? The techniques are the same. Sorry about that. The techniques are the same, but it's, the, it's whether the objective is for the good of the other person, I suppose. You, you wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't good for you, but is it for them, I suppose, is the key. Anyone from Will's team? Uh, perhaps you will. Are you happy to share what you've also discussed in your group? No, no, I'm not. I think Suzanne should do it. <laughs> well, I think your post it was definitely the best, um, Will, to say for sure. Now you need to tell everybody what it said, Suzanne. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were saying that it's about looking at strategies that you use um, when you are looking to use persuasion. And I think learning from it, I think, Will, um, 
he said he just moves on. He says that if he makes a mistake, he just likes to move on from things and doesn't seem to reflect very much. Did that summarise well? That's it, yes. Perfect. I'll get it. <laughs> okay, so uh, Jason, are you okay to share what we discussed in our group? Or just quickly, just to give Ali an idea yeah. of what we're saying? Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I took maybe a slightly different approach, but it was um, with regard to sort of a sales scenario when I actually want to persuade. Um, but my lesson learned was making sure I step back because I naturally jumped straight into the sales pitch. I wouldn't look at the visual cues or the things that could help me. And I find I'm pitching to people who really aren't interested and they're actually there trying to persuade me to buy their things. Um, and yeah, it's about stepping back, talking to the people or sort of, Open, asking an open question so that people will reveal more information to you that you can then utilize and in some cases say actually this isn't a valid prospect um, but yeah it's um, yeah getting those cues and those bits of information before you jump in and try and persuade okay Ali anything to add to what you've heard uh, Mary sorry please Mary that's right I, what I wanted to say was that I think the real key is listening and you don't start to persuade any, anybody to do anything until you've heard what they really want and so we're all too ready to rush in and start to persuade people but actually I think you have to stop and listen and ask a few questions just to try and find out more about them we're all very ready to to talk but I think we should be listening and that's the key once you've to someone then you may pick up something that's useful thank you mary ali uh, why don't we go to the second bit of your presentation so if we can all go to view presentation yes, because, and anything to add ali no because i think if we don't go back there i will have nothing to say for the rest of the presentation because all these <laughs> are <also> in the <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's go to view presentation all right. Oh, sorry. We just left again. Coming back. There we go. <laughs> so, So, um, everyone can hear me. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I as as I was saying, I think some of the the, the main point here was about what did we learn from an experience that happened to us. And we'll come back to, to that part in, in, the, third se um, in the third session um, about you know, um, being prepared and learning. But I just wanna move from here. And you know, I, 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 heard, I think listen, observe, learn were the three words that I would take away from this first session. And we can, as I said, we'll discuss those again um, in about 15 minutes or so. Um, Oops, I didn't mean to jump. I'm just trying to get back where I was. So, um, sorry. So if we go back and talk about what persuasion is really about, and I know I heard the word manipulation. I heard the word, um, you know, some negative. I don't. I, I just move on, and it's a bit dangerous, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But ultimately, it's about sales. Um, I mean it. That's what we think when we think about persuasion and we, we may think about manipulation. People try to sell us something that we don't want to buy and, and so on. There are lots of studies and there are lots of books. Um, I heard someone saying that they read a few books around this. And there's one that I particularly like, uh, which is called To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. And in his, in his book, while he's, 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 he's touching on, on several parts of sale, there's a particular section where he describes sales people or what comes to mind when we talk about sales. So try to imagine now a situation where we take away all the synonyms uh, of sales or persuasions and try to think what would be left as words in your mind before I reveal you the slide, the slide from Daniel Pink. And this is what comes to mind. So overwhelming, that's the biggest 
element that we think about when we think about persuasion and sales. And I think you guys said it. I mean, and this is why we don't want to be associated with sales. We don't want to, well, that's how we think about salespeople. You know, no one wants to be slimy or difficult or annoying or dishonest. I think there's one positive one there, entertaining. Salespeople can be entertaining. But, you know, it, it's, and, and this is led by situations where you have been talking to people, um, you have had an experience, and that's what really creates the situation. I mean, I, I, I love motorbikes, and I was, you know, I was looking at this kind of old restored motorbikes, and the best argument that the salesperson could give me was, I have someone else interested on the bike. And and this is where I walk away because I'm like, you never told me why I should buy it, you know, what year he was made on and stuff. And this these are important elements for us. You really we are all salespeople at the end of the day, so we shouldn't really despise or base our perception on those experiences that we had. I'm sure this image will tell you a lot. You all, we all have seen the full Swiss Wall Street. And, and essentially what he's doing here, Leonardo DiCaprio, is putting someone in a position to sell something completely useless, which is a pen. But we do that all the time. We spend our lives selling. We sell ourselves when we go for a job interview. We sold ourselves tonight in a way when we were networking in, in the lobby. Um, we sell our budget to our board, our, our vision to our team, and Saturday night, I think Leonardo might that, uh, uh, mention that, we, we will sell the, the movie we want to watch on Netflix to our family. It's part of our DNA, whether we like it or not, whether you're in HR or whether you're in finance or whether you're in sales, sales is what we do the whole day. Um, but at the same time, we never want to say that we are on sales. We want to, we will, we all, how, what are the terms that we have now? Partnership director, you know, uh, client director, but ultimately it is all sales. Now, based on what you just, you said before, you know, the listen, observe, um, and um, what was the third one? Uh, I can't remember now, but all of those attributes that you came up with, are all proactive, uh, sorry, reactive attributes. None of them is proactive. Everything that you said is about listen, observe, but those things can only happen while you're at the place, at the event, at the sales pitch. They will not happen before. The most important part of persuasion is preparation. And I wanna take an example um, talking about this that has to do with football. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge football fan. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm not a fan of Manchester City. I actually despise them. I'm a fan of Arsenal. But I can't talk about anyone else at this stage because these guys won the championship. And they, they didn't win it like a no win. They had the earliest Titan win, the most consecutive Premier League wins. They had the most cons consecutive Premier League away wins. And they had the most wins and the most points in one season. So literally they had a you know it was a big slam dunk and 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 that was due only to preparation i can hear someone typing it only was but it's gone now hmm. a preparation of this one individual here pep guardiola and I don't know how much you know about football, but this this is a this is a very interesting analysis that uh, I read a few weeks ago about how he prepares himself. Normally, a football team or a soccer team, as they call it in part of the world, they will have three formations. So now, for those who are not familiar with football, formation is how you place the players on the field and how many play, which players you place where. A regular team will have three possible four formations. And when I say regular, I'm going to say Arsenal, Man United, Chelsea, all the others. They will have a home game formation. They will have an away formation. They may have a cup formation and they will have one that they use against specific teams. You know how many formations Man City had this year? Eight. And on each of those formations, you would have different players playing 
in a specific place. So this is against Barcelona and Champions League. You can see that there's a very clear difference against Man United, who are, who are a top team. And this is against Leicester, who were in the second part of the table this year by being champion last year. And you see that Sanya, for example, is here on the right, um, right back. Here is much outer because he wants to really use his qualities for a different place. And here is not in the team because possibly against Barcelona, the qualities he had didn't work. Without wanting to spend too much time on this, I, you know, I just want to say this is why they won, because they were prepared, not because they learned. Football teams spend not hours, days and, and, and years to learn about their opponents. Mm. They would have scouts at the other team's game. They would, um, you know, talk to players who played for the team. They would read, watch games on TV or on tapes. And that's what a good coach does. Now, what this is telling me is how do we prepare ourselves? And, and, and this is essentially the pitch, I call it. How does that apply to us? And I'm going to ask you one question. I know some of you are in sales, some of you aren't, but think about it in a more holistic way. How many sales deck or pitch deck do you have? How many times did you or your team just amended one, possibly two slides, before you went for a sales or a pitch meeting? And don't think only about the sales one, think about your corporate deck. You only have one corporate deck, probably. Maybe two, but that's it. Pitches are not anymore about a corporate boilerplate or a media deck. They are, they have to be crafted. Yeah crafted, that's the word I use, individually for each client. In my team, what we do, we start from scratch everyone, every time, I'm sorry. A pitch or a deck is never started by using the previous pitch. It starts with a brief that we write in a Word document saying, okay, this is the client we are going to see, description of the client. This is the objective of this meeting. This is what we would like to have at the end of it, and this is the next steps or takeaway. We will then craft a deck. And yes, 50% of, of the times the content would be the, the same, but then it may be, most of the time be, will be in different orders. That takes us to the next breakout session. Take the next five or few minutes to think about your latest presentation or your regular presentation, your decks, whether they are in verbal or formal, right? And think of anything that you could have done differently or how can you improve those going forward based on what we just discussed. We okay. Can go back to the so we can, yeah, if we can go back to the large workshop whiteboard. We do an exercise called learn by sharing. So you can follow the, the pet capture and then discuss uh, Ali's question. And Ali will be able to join you if, you know. Yes. Okay, so again, first names. I'm really sorry about the dragging. And what I'm going to do now this time is actually I'm going to have a look at what they've done. So I'm going to go to the first name A to H. If you can join me here by clicking on the yellow triangle above my head. Or if you wait, I'll help you to find your way. From this team, who, who would like to share? I think we probably David Boxall. Yeah. Is that okay for you, David? Yeah, 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 it's fine. Uh, actually, these are these are all my comments, so I can I can quite easily talk about them. The I, just as a uh, as an aside here. Sorry, I know I do asides, but I mean I, I I couldn't actually hear the other guys, and I I sometimes suspect that when I'm off the mat, you can't actually hear the other people in the in the group. Maybe that's something to look at in the future. If you click on the yellow triangle, you often get over the mat, and then you can't hear the people behind you. And I think that was what was going on here, but. Anyway, so the most important, uh, the biggest surprise that I had anyway, was that uh, preparation was the biggest part of persuasion. 
somehow intrinsically I knew that, and perhaps because of what I've read before, but that, because it was alliteration, perhaps was the the, the 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 way that I needed in order to make it really sink in and that's something that, that everybody can sort of take home with them it's it's, it's catchy it uh, it works um, what I learned was Manchester City had eight four uh, scouts to other teams which I thought was kind of sneaky but I suppose everybody's doing that so why not and how can I use this in the future well in a sense that I'm already doing it because I do spend a lot of time on preparation I just feel as if I need to. Um, something that I'm working on today is is combining. It's about 50 emails into one document so that I've got a complete overview of all of the information that was said over a time span of about a month. And I'm, I'm then able to understand it for myself, but also then present it to, to other people. It's a, it's a claim. And um, it doesn't do to carry this information around in your head. You need to be able to present it. And that takes time. Yeah, it does. OK, thank you. So uh, just Mary, are you happy to quickly share what we discussed here or you were sharing with us? Um, sure. I mean, I, I think my biggest surprise out of the piece was actually, uh, although I've labelled it selling to family, is the, the frequency of which selling actually happens in day-to-day -day life and how one can take simple day-to-day -day activities and apply them perhaps into one's workspace in terms of what we do, selling the finance story or the finance problem or the workforce problem. Actually, we're trying to sell perspectives um, as well as inf share information. I learned that on a Saturday night, um, I usually win what goes on the telly, um, but perhaps I could think a little bit more and listen to other perspectives and listen to other um, options and opportunities. Um, and I think using it in the future is perhaps that bit about trying a different TV program or, or a channel on a Saturday night or different ways of persuasion might actually open up new possibilities for the future. Um, and, I, and, and so I think that, that the opportunity not necessarily always to win a sales pitch or always to do differently or to keep one's choices and options open about what one is selling is sometimes a good thing, is what I heard from some of the background pieces. Thank you. We're just quiet, Mary, because we're sounded. So. So we're going back to view presentation. Thank you. Ali, any comments on what you've just heard? Well, um, no, no, no more. I think everyone said um, what I wanted to hear. And I, I'm glad that, you know, some of the things um, that were said take in. Um, I'm, I'm, I can't remember who made the comment about it sunk in when it actually that, you know, you saw it in on the on the on the slides, and it goes back to the very beginning of the presentation where you may have been seeing it all along, but you didn't really register it that way. So I think about the two squares that were different colors. Today was no different than you know today. We just had a, probably a different perspective on the same situation that allowed you to have that thing. So, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who said that, but I thought it was a very interesting comment. So we're back on uh, on our presentation for the last uh, part of this session, and so we have looked at perception. Oh, okay. Just give back an echo and someone typing again. So. We looked at perception and our reality is not always what we think it is. And I just made the, the, the comment there. We have looked at sales and how to build the pitch better by assembling the items in a different uh, way to create. And I think somewhat Mary just mentioned it, a winning argument where it's a win-win situation. So we have the context, we know the objects and the ingredients. Um, but persuasion is not only having all of these in hand, but it is also to be prepared for. So we discussed about preparation before. But what are we preparing ourselves for? 
I preserve, I prepare myself to the no. People are scared of, you know, it's one of the most scary moment when you're trying to sell something and someone says, no, no, I don't want it. Um, and I think someone was mentioning, you know, all of these salespeople coming and not really listening to what they have, to do, what he wanted. Um, and, and, you know, it could be a bad, a bad preparation, but I think the most important part is that you have to be prepared for the no. In my, in my case, I, I'm like, oh, I'm glad you, you said no, because I'm ready. Generally, you know, there, there are theories that say, oh, you have to be prepared to answer three questions. And if you answer three questions, they won't ask any more questions. But the reality is there's only one thing that you need to be prepared for is the no. And I, re I repeat keeping that. Because that's where the actual persuasion process kicks off. Before that, you've just been setting the scene. But, and if they say yes, you've done a great job. But if they say no, which is the case in most cases, that's where you have to start persuading them to say yes, or try to find a compromise. And the no will take you and the person or the group you're talking to through a conversation that will take a human dimension is where the storytelling starts. And that's the biggest part of persuasions. Storytelling is when you are setting the ground for negotiation and not any more sales. So you moved up a level, you get closer to your objective because now it's a time you can win. And storytelling is divided in uh, a number of different um, categories, but I'm just gonna look at, you know, there is again, a science that says that influential is based on six, um, six bits or six um, different levels. Imagine inviting a friend to your place, you would expect them to invite you back. And that's what, you know, happens all the time. And that's called reciprocity. And that can be used and is used when you're storytelling. It's all about trying to give something to the person you're talking to, to get something back. And the better you give, the better it goes. If you be, bring a great bottle of wine to your friend, you're probably gonna get a very good bottle of wine when they visit. Um, the, the second element, you know, it, that I, I like, and there's this, the, the friend that I was invited you, uh, invited to, was telling me the story of his daughter who wouldn't eat broccoli. And what she did was she basically put a, a, a jar of lolly in the kitchen and her daughter was allowed to eat as much lolly as she wanted for six years. On her sixth anniversary, she asked for a broccoli cake. And that was her way to get her daughter to ask and eat actual vegetables. And that's called scarcity. People want more of those things that there are less of. Think about the Concorde. The day they decided to cancel the Concorde, it's the time where they sold out every flight going throughout the Atlantic. And every seat, and on every flight actually, on, on the last um, of, of the Concorde flights were sold way before you know, the, the, the planes were taking off. And again, that's, that's creating scarcity. Talking about that, when at the same dinner, my, my wife was, who, who is um, um, a dietitian, started talking about, you know, how good broccoli were versus um, lollies and, and so on. And that leads you to the, to the third of the six rules that I have or that exist for storytelling, it's authority. If you are someone who is credible, or if you have someone that is credible that can help you in your argument, and you include that um, person or fact in your story, it will always be more credible and you'll and you have more authority in your story than not having that. And if you move on from there, my wife was talking about how good it is vegetables and how good it is for your health and how it is, it, it is good to be healthy. The next one is obviously consistency. Um, if 
health, you know, if you talk about um, health through a dietitian, and then you move into how healthy it is, what good, and how the food is different, it, it goes into consistency. There's a there's another story that goes around, which is about how you can get people to follow. Um, Hello, I can't. Hi, we're here. We, we can all hear you, we just heard. Just cube this. Hello. I can hear you perfectly. Hi, Ali. I can oh, hear you, Ali. Back. Sorry, I lost. Oh, I can. Oh, I had a very loud pitch, pitch sound for me. Sorry. Um, so, one way to, to get to consistency is also asking through um, small initial commitments that can be made when you're talking to someone. Um, I'm sorry, I just lost. Okay, nobody panic. We still have our speaker. <laughs> it's just he's muted himself. Hi, Ali. I hope you can hear us. You've turned off your mic. Okay, DW, you've seen these slides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try the broccoli example Hello. with my, my daughter. Hi, Ali. Hi, Ali. <laughs> we all hear I'm you back. perfectly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I couldn't. I, I lost it when he went back. So sorry about that. Um, I think we did. We do consistency. Did you hear me that far? Yep. Okay. The next one is about it's liking. Generally, people prefer to say yes to those people they like, and this goes with your preparation. And you know, it's 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 good to have some social talks, but it's good to talk about subjects that these people like. So if you know that like I, I like football, and you try to sell me some, if you start by football, then you know it will probably be a good place for me to start liking you and I'm more likely to say yes to what you're going to sell me. And the final one is consensus. People always look to actions to, of others to determine their own. So if they know that one of their friends has bought your product, they probably will buy your products as well. A good example is with hotels. And with my work, I spend about 250 uh, days on the road. So that's about 250 nights in a hotel when it's not on a plane. And what I noticed is that certain hotel will just say that, you know, they recycle towels. Uh, they say, you know, you have the choice to use the same towel again, or you can leave it on the floor and we'll replace it for you. The other thing that I noticed is that some other hotels give you actual numbers. They would say 70% of our guests reuse their towels. What I noticed with myself, which I then asked the front desk managers about, is that when I see the 70%, I'm more likely to reuse my towel because I feel the pressure of numbers. And I don't want to be the 30% that doesn't. And that's what you can use back in your storytelling when you are trying to convince someone is about coming up with facts or people they know that are actually using your product or have said yes to what you're trying to do. Now, winning, the winning trick is, to me, the final straw in, in the storytelling art, as I call it. Now, you remember at the very beginning, I talked about my first 30 days and how I was feeling a little bit um, doubtful about me having made the right decision. But I decided to stay, and that's why I'm still here. So I had to find a way to confront reality and, and, and find an approach to keep my distributors happy, for them not to cancel the, the, the contracts. Because if we did lose the distribution, there was no way we could win. Even we had the best content, we wouldn't have viewers, we wouldn't have an audience, we wouldn't have advertisers. So it was the end of it. So, and you, 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 you know, I, I couldn't go just with storytelling because even if I had used the six items that I just mentioned to you, you know, 
reciprocity, scarcity, authority, consistency, liking and consensus, that wouldn't have been enough because my predecessors would have probably told them stories, same or different stories. So I use my little trick. And that trick is about admitting a mistake to close a deal. Offer an apology to convince them to make a deal with me. And my apology was very simple. I went to each and every one of them, particularly those big ones that I wanted to keep. And I said, look, we've made a lot of mistakes as a company. The thing is, I can't change the past. I can only apologize for it. But here is what I want to do going forward and work with you to try to achieve what is good for us and for you to create a win-win situation. And in those few words, some of you may have noticed that I used most of those items I mentioned before. Reciprocity, scarcity, I need you, <laughs> consistency, liking, and consensus. And that's where I believe the secret is. It's all about admitting a weakness to be able to then counterattack, to use not probably a word that you want to hear, to close the deal. So, is it, oh, sorry, it just went too fast. So I, I really, this was the last of, of, of the, the third part. And just think about, I would like to go for you go away and think about a situation where you could have acted better with a no answer. And how would you use what we just discussed about, particularly the trick? Would, did you use it or would you use it? to for things to be different now okay thank you very much how about a round of applause for ali before we you know it's been mm, lots of learning i i think we've run out of the last round of uh, activity ali i'm sorry because i think i think people probably want to consolidate and then we need to just close leo what do you think yeah we, so should we get people to the tables to discuss and then we can coffee feed back to Ali coffee and then tables. we can all close back on time? Yeah. So if we can all go to the coffee tables. Ali, that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Leo, how long have we got to talk about it? A couple of two minutes? Two minutes. Yeah. Maybe three minutes. Yeah, two, three minutes. And then we'll come back and then we'll all share. Then we'll take all the value out of it. Ali, that was great. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. So I, I'm going to use Ali's sorting method. So Ali, when you, I was teasing you earlier, consistency, it was like how I've always taught you, I teased you, um, yeah. and I'm going to do more. <laughs> not the wrong method, is <laughs> Go it? for it. <laughs> Guys, have a seat. We good. Let's have a chat. Let's come back, and then we can tell Ali all our yeah, thoughts and what we've learned. Thank you. I missed some of that because I had to, I had to yeah, jump out and yeah, was, um, deal with it's the interesting project. actually. Yeah, I thought that um, it, it looked really interesting. The, the, the point around you know sort of listening to people and sort of building that relationship and that rapport and sort of getting to understand them. Um, oh, Suzanne's joined us as well there, is that right? Yeah, it's good and it is. Hi, Chris. Mary, Hi, our Sheila. Last How are you? Good. Uh, sort of ready to Point around that, and, and what I thought. I missed parts of it. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. I caught the bit with the book. I was a very small child, so that was very useful. Ali, I don't know whether you want to sit and listen to and chat. Oh. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think it just the honesty of the selling. You know, sometimes you think. Um, for me to persuade to persuade somebody it's you know, maybe been slightly it's honest. I don't know why I thought that before I came in, but I don't feel like that now, so it's made me change how I think about persuading like, uh, I mean, some, you know, that, uh, yeah, it's, I, th I don't know, I've always probably seen it as a I think, slightly I think negative. preparation comes into I mean, a lot of things, I think it's uh, yeah, it's slightly uh, negative, so I don't feel like that now. I really appreciate the honesty of, um, we throw in a curse or anything like that. I think we discussed quite a lot about the preparation, you know, in the case of making sure you know the client, you know who you're selling to, what you're selling, and the feeling for that, so that you're able to sort of draw on that, you're not 
kind of surgery. And you're sort of trying to wing it. Then session. you are and less confident so in yourself. And then it, that's been sort of, those if you stumble over the anything, the then you do come um, unstuck. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, what I'm wanting... No, the guy is interested in what I want, which is always a good place to start. Hello. Secondly, as the audience says, oh, thank you for a session at your session today. And he's going to stand up and entertain me. I didn't realise I've actually got to take part and do yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> so it instantly gets people to. Um, yeah. Have I, to funny engage, enough, the last uh, part got me thinking about. Like um, I used to yeah. work in project care, and we use uh, health promotion a lot. And I thought, you know, um, it'd be interesting because uh, I think you don't get it all the time. Yeah, it got me thinking. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Hi. We heard some good, interesting conversations. Sorry for the dragging. I'm just keeping an eye on the clock. I know some people have things to do at two o'clock. And what I'm going to do now is a quick spin, so you can quickly share. I'm going to start at the bottom this time. Will. Uh, Excellent. Any key stuff. learnings? Yes, um, yep. I really enjoyed that i know i i and i learned an awful lot about football because i had um, genuinely I, I had no idea and that was, i thought that was a terrific example of um of how football teams completely morph depending upon who they're playing excellent stuff well done ali thank you Damn. It's been really interesting. I'm still, as always, it takes me a while to ponder stuff, so I'm processing in my head as we speak. Thank you. Really good. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think for me, I saw persuasion as maybe negative, and I had said at the table, it's changed my way of thinking of it as a negative, so that I really appreciate that. So thank you. Simon? Yeah, I. I think it's excellent. I get lots to think about, and I always like to think about what if doing sales, etc. What does the customer think? So put yourself in the other person's shoes and think: Is it what I'm telling you relevant? Because often people give a lot of blurb, which isn't the relevant stuff, but there's a little niche bit in there that is the bit that will make that deal is relevant. Hey. Sarah. Yeah, it's a great a great reminder that when you go into something, to just spend that bit of time preparing. Uh, really focus on good preparation. You know, who's your audience? What are you trying to? What's the outcome? Um, and doing that, you you have a much you're likely to get a much better result. And so I think it's something that's kind of obvious in some cases, but I don't think we do enough of it. So great, Chris? thanks very much. Um, just a bit different for me because I'm as a surgeon and persuasion was often about uh, uh, selling an operation or a lifestyle for a patient. But it made me think about it in a different way. It's useful. Thank you. Mary Morgan. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Sorry, I was, I was just getting relayed by a, a private message that came in there. Um, so I guess my learning is actually what situation, in what situations am I, am I trying to persuade and sell to that I wouldn't previously thought of? Because I think that changes perhaps the language and the approach that one or that I might take going forward. So thinking of situations where I think I'm just having a conversation or just learning through a different route. Yes, uh, it was uh, very interesting, uh, particularly it is idea of the importance of preparation and to be prepared for the no. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I'm uh, a newbie and, and it was my first experience in a big uh, group. Um, so I've thoroughly enjoyed the experience today and also sort of the small group discussions and um, hearing from Ali. So thank you very much. And I would just like to say uh, thank you very much, Ali, for coming and giving a fascinating talk. That's fantastic. Uh, and I have um, some statistics to share with everyone. So if you remember, at the beginning of the session, we got you to put the sticky note on the map saying where you are in the world. And using that, we have calculated that if we had tried to meet up in the same physical space instead of meeting on cube, we would have had to travel 17,000 
543 miles today. Uh, so I'll break that down and put that into <laughs> perspective for you. We'd have to drive for 16 hours each. Uh, we'd have had to fly for five hours each. Uh, we would have burnt 8.5 tons of carbon, and that could be used to heat and light a house for 621 days, so over a year and a half. We would have spent uh, three and a half, uh, only 3,600 pounds uh, on the time we weren't working because we were travelling, uh, and the travel itself would cost 8,200 pound and the total cost of the travel altogether would have been 11,800 pound so yes congratulations everyone thank you josh uh, definitely worth a pause yeah jason yeah thank you ali um sort of mirroring some of the other comments uh, preparation is king here um and i can already see how i can apply that or be more proactive about it and um yeah, it will get me results, so thank you. Okay. David Boxall, DW. Uh, Ali, thanks very much for a very interesting talk. I, I read something, actually, I guess everybody must be interested in negotiation. One of the things that I read that was really good was it was a book called Never Split the Difference by uh, an ex-FBI agent called Chris Foss. And the thing that I liked about the book was that it was very easy to understand that it was not so full of theory that you couldn't actually apply it in, in real life. And your talk uh, mirrored that as far as I was concerned. And it gave me a couple of very practical and, and useful things that I can, um, that I can, I, I can use next time I'm uh, speaking to somebody. And it's, it's not, it's not something that requires an awful lot of theory and yeah in order to put into practice yeah. you just sort of go ahead yeah. and do it and see how it works it's very good okay. i'll skip ali adrian skip adrian eddie if we're doing eddie I'm, i apologize for the the noise of the um uh, which you probably heard of the uh, grass being cut and that's because i'm actually on an island in venice as you can see <laughs> out of doors, <laughs> running my cube, listening to the cube session. So I just thought I'd show off with that. <laughs> ah, tough hard life, isn't apart, it? Yeah. Apart from Someone that, has to do it. <laughs> Ali, that was fabulous. I think we need at least three or four rounds of applause from, from us. Oh, DW, oh, anything to you. add before we say a big thank you to Ali? Uh, no, no, nothing further to add. Just thank you again, Ali. It was, it was a wonderful session. Everyone, a, a massive round of applause, and uh, let's, let's really show how we should appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Don't forget, thank you. Thank you. Very good. Clap close to your back, it's louder. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, thank you very much. You're brilliant. Very thank good. You. Great. Very so good guys, um, we're, we're building the community steadily, so please bring more people. Um, you remember, we're flattening the world. We're going to share our good ideas and we're going to transform the world into something amazing just by learning and sharing and really having a good time together. So thank you very much. And a big thank you to Leo for guiding us and to DW and Tracy for organizing everything. Thanks guys, well done. <laughs> thank terrific, you. terrific session. Thank you. Thanks everyone, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. well done. Bye, bye, bye. bye. bye, -bye.